when you're out of balance, you're in survival. And when you're in survival, you want to rush to get things done. You can't be present. You know, you uh, you believe everything that equal to the feeling of fear. When you're out of balance, you're you're in survival. And when you're in survival, you want to rush to get things done. You can't be present. You know, you uh, you believe everything that equal to the feeling of fear or hostility because information is relevant to you in that emotional state. So uh, teaching people then that they have some type of control over that, that that sympathetic response, that emergency system that switches on is preparing you for something you can't predict. That's an unknown, something uh, that um, you can't control. And um, that survival system uh, causes us uh, to move more into our animal nature. And we're tapping our body's vital resources uh, for health and regeneration. So short term, it's great, but you keep doing it over and over again, you start becoming more and more conditioned to that rush of energy. So teaching people how to self-regulate, teaching them how to move back into the present moment, teaching them that they can shorten their responses. It's, it's really not that you react. I mean, we all react. The question is, how long are you going to react for? Because if you keep that reaction going, then then you can't perceive any change in your environment. You won't have any ability to heal. So you become more af affected by your environment. So simple process of getting back into the present moment, uh, self-regulating, trading that fear uh, to for some other emotion. And that that's doing the work and, and right. the practice. And that's what we're, we should be doing because now we have energy to heal. <laughs> we have energy for right. growth and repair. We have energy um, to create now. We're not losing energy now, we're, we're, we're gaining energy. And that's now, that signals the immune system as we talked about. And that's what causes T cells to make uh, anti, uh, antibodies and antigen, the immunoglobulins uh, that fight antigens. And, and now your internal defense system can, can take care of the micro world yes. uh, where there are invasions where there are attackers and you have energy to heal and your immune system as we said is always combating viruses and, and bacteria and, and if you're less uh, responsive to your environment emotionally then you're less responsive to your environment physically and you have, right. more, you have more energy and and uh, people just need to know the information because that empowers them uh, to begin to make different choices and now that you know um, you can apply knowledge and make a different choice demonstrate a different behavior create a new experience and that new experience creates a new emotion wow then all of a sudden now you uh you start learning new things and you start stepping away from your old self when you receive something you've just received something uh, when something's happening to you or something just happened to you that's favorable, you feel this feeling of gratitude. So yes. the emotional signature, its signature emotionally means something just happened to you or something is happening to you. So your body is so objective that it doesn't know the difference between an experience in your life that creates an emotion and an emotion that you can fabricate by thought alone. To so the body, it's so objective, it's exactly the same. So when people start to feel gratitude, to. Their body is believing that something favorable is going to happen to them that is that, or has already happened to them. The emotional signature of gratitude is the perfect signature or the state of energy to receive. So, so when we begin to embrace our future and we give we feel gratitude for it, we will believe that future is more of a reality because it's equal to the emotion that we're experiencing. But we're feeling the emotion before the actual event occurs. So gratitude, in a sense, you could use it to elevate your energy. And when you do just 10, 15 minutes a day, you'll strengthen your immune system by 50%. That's wow, research. just by having gratitude for 10, 15 minutes. Yes, because your body starts to put energy right in your heart center and there's a gland in there that we talked about in your show called yeah. the gland that has endocrinological aspect and immunological aspect and it begins to signal chemicals that tells your T cells strengthen you got energy to like modify and create more receptors for anything coming out and now your inner environment is doing that and your T cells make these antibodies these uh, immunoglobulins that, yes. that are the body's natural flu shot it's proteins that protect cells especially immune cells and now you have an internal army an internal order that that will be greater than the environment and now you have now you have strength you know and, and you from a suggestibility standpoint you only accept believe and surrender to thoughts equal to your emotional state 
So if people are in fear, then the information that comes in equal to fear, they will begin to resonate with or relate with because it's equal to that emotion. So they'll accept the information, they'll believe the information, they'll, they'll surrender to the information without ever analyzing it. Yeah. And that programs us into certain limited behaviors. So then when you feel gratitude, the thoughts that you think, the, the dreams that you create, that you demonstrate, you begin to feel the future. Now something else happens you start creating a huge change in the information and you program your autonomic nervous system to program your body to become that future and and people are doing it you think 60 to 70 thousand thoughts in one day out of those 60 to 70 thousand thoughts that you think in one day 90 percent of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before so if you believe that your thoughts somehow are connected to your life, then the same thoughts always lead to the same choices. The same choices always lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences, and the same experiences produce the same emotions. And those very same emotions drive the very same thoughts. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your neurochemistry, your neurohormones, and even your genetic expression is equal to how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So then, if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious thoughts and observe them. You would have to pay attention to your automatic habits and behaviors and modify them. And you would have to look at the emotions you live by every single day that are connected to your past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. You see, most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else.